Hi there and welcome back to Planescape Torment. I'm Byron and we are still in the small ring corpse bar. This time we talk to Kendrian. You see a soft looking man with gentle far staring eyes. He dresses in supple leather clothing and carries various implements of use and destruction about his body, such as ropes, spikes, tinderbox and empty vials of air. He looks half gone, literally. There is an insubstantiality to his existence, as if his essence had been partially leached away. He focuses those eyes on you and suddenly you find them gripping and determined. Greetings to you, O Seeker. Greetings. He carefully sets down the muck he's holding and gives you all his attention. I have seen the far reaches of the multiverse and returned to tell the tale. I have walked upon the bodies of dead gods and spun moonbeams in the astral ahead of a thousand shrieking Githyanki knights. I have passed the edges of existence and watched my essence shiver away before me. What is it I can do for you? I have some questions for you. Perhaps I have answers for you. Speak and I shall tell you. I have met a woman named Ingress with very bad teeth. She said she had come through a portal from some world that was opened by a tune hummed near two cross trees. Can you get her home? He pauses, briefly thinking. I know the portal of which you speak, though I have not traveled it these thirty years gone. I will take her home, Seeker. Go tell her to await my arrival, then meet me back here and I will tell you if I, have if I was successful or not. Thanks, I have some other questions. We are able to help Ingress, I really like that. Who are you? I'm Candrian Illborn, traveler, dreamer, tail spinner and so forth. You're a traveler? Tell me of the planes. I am tired, Seeker, so tired. I am fresh back from negotiation. I will answer what I can for you, but I cannot promise that you will find satisfaction in the answers I give. What would you know? Would you hear of the outer planes, the prime material or the inner planes? What's the difference? The difference is true essence, Seeker. The inner planes are matter, substance, true physicality. They are the building blocks of the multiverse, for it is from them that all believe in the elements spring. The inner planes filter through the theral plane, the plane of potential, some say, which forms the elements into the worlds of moral mortals. Once past the ethereal plane, one reaches the prime material where exists all manner of mortals and monsters and myths and machines. It is there that belief is born, and there that the spirits that create the outer planes are born. When mortals die, they pass through the astral plane, and no place that is thought and mental energy itself. It is all things and in none. It is in all things and in none. It is paradox among other things, and it filters spirits into the greater ring. Do you comprehend so far? Oh, barely. Yes, go on. Now, the outer planes. Where should I start? Do you know the cardinal rules of the planes on which all others are based? Do you know about the composition of the outer planes? Do you know of the great ring and its diversions in our hearts? Do you know of the individual planes? Each of these leads to the next, so it is best to start from the beginning. Well then... Tell me of the composition of the planes. <coughs> the outer planes are created of and by belief and thought and faith. They take the imagined form from the prime material plane, shaped into forms that stagger the imagination, built by the accumulation of belief. Belief creates the planes. Belief is power here. Change belief and you can change the nature of reality. The creatures that are born here, the plane born like the fiends and celestials, are truly born of the thoughts and concepts of mortals. They each express some sort of ideal, and the more powerful the ideal, the more powerful the being. Thus, the being that symbolizes love is one of the strongest of all. Go on. That's why the powers, gods, some call them, live out here. This is where all the faith in them comes. This is where they are at their most pure and most strong. Their realms are extensions of their very beings, manifestations of their godly essence, all of it informed by belief. So the composition of the planes is belief. Tell me of the great ring now. 
among the loose unity of plane walkers we conceive uh, of the infinite outer planes as a ring surrounding the plane of ultimate neutrality, the Outlands. The spire atop which Sigil sits is in the center of the Outlands. The further one travels away from the spire, the less neutral the plane grows until it spills into the neighboring planes. Each of these planes impinges on the Outlands, spinning themselves into law and chaos and good and evil. The Great Road marks the demarcation demarcation between the outlands and the gate towns that spring up around the gates to these plains. Beyond the gate towns lie the hinterlands, uncharted territory. Hinterlands, um, yeah, hinterland actually is a German, it stands for backland. A territory that is in the back, so to say. Uncharted territory that is lost to history, that loses thought. Danger lies in the hinterlands. Go on. The outer planes differ by morality, not substance. For you will divide the planes into three sets. The upper planes of good, the lower planes of evil, and the boundary planes of neutrality. They are, they, these are then divided further by law and chaos with the outlands in the middle. Which of these interests you? Hmm, let's talk about the upper planes. Of the upper planes, there are the neutral planes, the lawful planes, and the chaotic planes. What do you want to know? Let's talk about the neutral planes. The neutral upper planes contain the beast lands, a place of neutrality and goodness, where a slight tinge of chaos, with a slight tinge of chaos, where the animals rule in the eternal noon and night. They hold Bytopia, twin paradise of industry and labor, where all work toward the good of all, and Elysium, the sweetest plane of goodness and calm I have ever come across. Alas, right now I am not well enough to enjoy any of their restorative effects. Uh, what would you hear of now? Tell me of the rest of the upper planes, the lawful planes. Kandrian gives a small shudder. I am not the best person to speak of the planes of law, he says. For the innate structure and ultimate patterns they impose frighten me. I steer clear of them because I value my individuality more than I value the knowledge they'll bring me. They include regimented Arcadia, nearest of the good plains to the unbending order of Mechanus, and Mount Celestia, home of the Arch Archons and Ireland in the Silver Sea. Okay, and uh, what about the chaotic plains? These are where I feel at home, though I steer clear of Yusgard, for the most part the endless battles and tests of metal among the floating earthbergs of the plain don't do much for my disposition. Our Borea though, he sighs. The mountains are taller, the air cleaner, the rivers purer, and the game larger than anywhere else. It is a true paradise, a place where passion runs high and the wine never ceases to flow. When I have recovered enough of my wits and myself, when you have done with the outer planes, you should ask me of the inner and I will describe my journey to you. I will return to Arborea's boars and glades and lose myself for a time. What else do we have? Uh, let's talk about the inner planes then. He sighs as if this reminded him of his bone deep weariness. Think of the inner planes as a globe. On the top pole you have the positive material plane. On the bottom you have the negative material. He pauses. Remind me to tell you of the negative. His eyes turn inward to some private horror. From the interaction between the two springs all of the urge for existence and non-existence. Death and life. Actuality and nothing. From them spring the basic elemental planes like fire, water, air and earth. The para-elemental planes that lie between the four basic elements and the quasi-elemental planes that come from the interaction of the four elements with the positive and negative. <laughs> that all qualifies as, you know, gibberish. But whatever. This is the backstory. Tell me of the negative material plane. His eyes cloud over. I went to the inner planes to discover my true essence. I, make the mi I made the mistakes of visiting the negative material plane in order to understand my body's urge to decay and the cycle of death and life. I thought pr myself protect against the ill effects of the plane with my magic, but I was wrong. 
The blackness of infinite nothing pressed on my soul and I was beset by shadows that sought to snuff out my very soul. I lost my way for a time, for an eternity, I nearly lost my existence. I could feel my essence falling away from me and I am even and am even now half gone. Never will I return. How do you survive? Updated my journal. How did I survive? He smiles tightly. With a piece of nothing that held back the nothing. Nothing can stop nothing, you know. And so I carried nothing in my hand to protect me. Do you plan to journey to the ultimate negotiation yourself? You have the smell of desperation about you and so I make you this gift. Hold it in your hand when the shadows press in and it should protect you and your friends somewhat. Should they remain close to you? Heh. <laughs> he passes you a small black token that looks as if it has no dimension to it at all. Let's talk about the prime material then. You want to know if the prime wizarded. The boundless worlds of that plane have an infinity, infinite, vari infinite variety as do the planes, but I cannot encapsulate them as I have here. Suffice it to say, they are the birth of the outer planes, the children of the inner, and they hold limitless potential within their boundaries. What did you mean when you mentioned negotiation? No, not negotiation, negation, actually. Negation. That actually makes quite a difference. Do you plan the journey to the ultimate negation yourself? Yeah, I was wondering who would I negotiate with, but you know, that's all. A little gibberish at some times here. Yeah? Okay. His eyes cloud over. Oh no, that's the same actually. I used the token I gave you and barely held on to my life. Without it, I should have perished entirely. Okay. Um, well, we have some other questions. Who are you? Okay, we already had that. What are you doing? I, I am fresh back from neg negation. And I'm trying to restore my essence before it slips away from me altogether. Ooh, okay, apparently this, this trip to the negative sphere, negative plane, really was something you shouldn't have done, probably. What is this place? Unless the cosmos has shifted or we have been spun into the mazes, I would say that we are in the smoldering corpse tavern. What can you tell me of the patrons here? I mind my own business here, seeker, for I spend too much time away not minding it. Speak to the bartender if you would learn more of the customers. Maze? What do you mean? Aye, the maze is where the lady dumps those who have displeased her. He makes a small semicircle over his heart as he speaks the lady's name. If you'd know more of the lady and the city, find a tout or some such guide. We already have found a guide. I'm looking for a journal I lost. I have seen no journals lately but for my own and that has crumpled away into nothingness. My apologies. Do you know a collector named Farad? Farad grew up to be a collector? How long ago was this? When I set out last, he was but a officious stripling in one of the upper wards. Heh. <laughs> Time does change people. No, Sega, I don't know Farad anymore. I'm willing to bet. Farewell then. And here is another one. I think somewhere here. Barely, barely able to see him. This is O. Did we talk to you anyway? Yeah, we already talked to you. Let's talk to Odin. You see a man standing stock still. He isn't moving a muscle. On close examination it appears that he isn't even breathing, just standing. His eye sockets are empty holes in his face, contained with their bounds as a flat grey light that seems to dance with possibility. Looking into the sockets, the eerie empty feeling of a limitless void shivers through you, as if you had gazed into a sliver of eternity. The head slowly swivels towards you. 
he noticed that no muscle appeared to move under his skin as he turns, and he speaks in a pure bell-like tone. Well met, Wanderer. Have you forgotten again? You have forgotten again, haven't you? Do you know me, stranger? As he opens his mouth, you get that feeling of eternity again. Inside his mouth you see no tongue, no teeth. It's almost as if it's this man were a shell surrounding an illimitable expanse. I have spoken with you before and always you forget. Your endless quest to discover yourself ends always in your amnesia. You draw close to the truth and recall. Let us hope that you have the strength to endure your existence. Yeah, by this time I'm at the keyboard. This time it will work out because I don't forget. What do you know of me? How do you know this? I know that you, like a fly, rise up from the wreckage of your old shell, buzz about for a time and curl up and die at the window of truth. You bumble about the pain, seeking the light without any plan to your actions, and fall exhausted when you fail. You alight on others to feed from them. To feed from them for a time and move on with no regard to them. I have watched you come here and listen to your words and watched you move away no wiser. Will you learn from your mistakes, Seeker? Who are you? I am O. For some reason when he speaks his name it sounds like he's speaking much more than a single letter, as if the speaking of his name contained untold possibilities and nuances. No human tongue could ever create such a sound. What are you? It is my name. It is the name of a portion of eternity. I am a letter in the divine alphabet. Understanding me leads to understanding existence. I am writ in the true names of half of everything. My being encompasses truth. I am mathematic, organic, metaphysic. So what does that mean? The divine alphabet is writ in the name of everything that exists, from the seed at the hearts of the elemental planes to the core of the great beyond. My brothers and sisters, a single word translates into the two in your mind, and I reach across all that is, was, or ever shall be. We are thought and reality and concept and the unimaginable. Tell me about the great beyond. You would not understand, no mortal possibly could. It is beyond the powers of comprehension of all but the most powerful of powers, and once they understand, they move beyond the veil of mortal comprehension. I can explain it no more than that. Perhaps sometime you will understand. So what are you doing here? I am watching the ebb and flow of mortality, and what do you see? Your mortals are like wasps. You build your lives' nests from the slimmest of branches, and when the wind shakes your home life free, you seek to sting the wind to death. Instead of realizing your foolish mistakes, attempting to repair the damage you have caused yourselves, and learning from your experience, you bring harm to any who have the misfortune to blunder near you in your time of pain and distress. My advice to you and to all mortals, stop acting like an insect and start acting sentient. Hmm, I'll think about that. Um. Hmm. So what are you doing here? Oh, we already had that. Thank you. So um, then you, then that means you know all the secrets of existence, doesn't it? I know parts of many of them. Without a connection to my brothers, sisters, I am but a letter. Alone, I am a symbol. Combined, we are language and power. So you don't know the secrets of existence? I did not say that. A letter is still a powerful force, even on its own. Allow me to show you. He opens his mouth wider and wider still. The mask of his face tears around his eyes, mouth and nose, revealing that hint of eternity you glimpsed earlier. You are lost in it, adrift in it, a part of it. You return to your mundane senses and realize that O has vanished, yet somehow your horizons have expanded. Enlightenment has brushed you, however briefly, across the bro. That was indescribable. And we have gotten wisdom apparently out of that. Um, 
How do we do this? Was it stats? Now we have a wisdom of 20. Your ability score represents your intuition. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Your wisdom surpasses that of mortal man. You gain substantial bonuses to all earned experience points. Nice. Uh, what is that? Oh, okay, get it. Now we can scroll and now we can't scroll. I thought C would bring up the character sheet, but it's actually S for stats, I guess. So that's probably all there is. We have lost O apparently, he vanished, but we've got an experience, a wisdom point out of that, so it's probably good. So we should um, try and find Ingress again, I think. Oh, really? Fuck off. Damn it. Thanks, everybody. The Karak sings true. Stupid thugs. Should know better than to deal with me. You're peaceful, right? Endure. Your path is mine. You should pick up I stuff. I shall on. serve. Your path is mine. So, who had the clutch charm? You. So this is what we got, the negative token. Wall against shadows. This is a negative token, a flat black disc that appears to have no substance to it at all. Turning it over reveals that it has no third dimension. There is no thickness to this item at all. It gives you some command over creatures of shadow. You can command them to stand still for a few precious seconds. The more powerful the shadow, the less likely it will obey your command. As an added benefit, as long as this token is carried by any of your party members, it acts as a ward against shadows. It will not prevent shadows from attacking your group, but the shadows will find it more difficult to harm you while the token is carried. This is important. So, I wanted to go to Ingress before I was so rudely interrupted. I think the exit was here. I shall serve. No, everybody, please. Not just you. Alright. There's another Avishai. You want some? Done. Where was it? Somewhere up here. Here. Alrighty. Now we have to find her again. She was up here, I think. Hive dwellers. Hive thugs. All right. Frightened hive dweller. All right. I'm gone. Ingress. <coughs> you see Ingress. She is huddled inside her cloaks of dirty rags. Her teeth chattering. She is glancing furtively about her as if expecting to be attacked at any moment. <coughs> Gotta drink something. Greetings, Ingress. Eh? You! She squints at you. What is it you want me now? Do you want me to leave? Not leaving the city, so I'm not. I can't. Try it. It's not a city. It's a prison. To everywhere. Ingress, I found someone who can take you back to your home plane. Ingress falls silence. I want to go. I want to leave this place. His name is Kendrian. He should be along shortly to help you. Trust him, alright? Ingress says nothing, merely nods quietly at teeth chattering inside her mouth. I'll go back and meet Kendrian at the smoldering corpse bar and make sure everything turned out alright. Be strong, Ingress. Updated my journal. Done. Done. That would be really awesome if you could. I'm gone. Him.
Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, go directly. Done. Hey, what the fuck, man? All right. Hey! Okay, now it works. Too bad you don't rege regenerate your health. Your stats, your constitution is not high enough. Shit. 16. I think you need 20 to, uh, a constitution of 20 to start regenerating your hit points. Um, the nameless one, well, because he's the nameless one, he regenerates it with a lower constitution too, but he would regenerate it faster. If he actually had, um, is that the exit here? No. Ah, here it was. He would regenerate the points faster if... Hey! Why doesn't it work? I'm gone. I shall serve. That's weird. He would re regenerate hit points faster if he actually um, had a constitution of 20 or higher. It's this the whole thing with the interface is weird though. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Any more thugs that want to mess with me? All right. Let's get in here. So, where is this guy? Did he help Ingress? I really hope he did help her. Candrian stands as you approach him. The tooth woman wanted you to have these, he says, holding out his hand. She wanted to express her thanks, even out the balance book as it were, and be done with the dance damn things. In the palm of his hand are Ingress's dancing teeth, and he smoothly deposits them in your hand. Enjoy them, seeker. Okay, yeah, she. You are, that makes sense. Uh, we helped her, and she gave us the teeth, her teeth, to balance out the, to even out the balance book. So well, awesome. Updated my journal. Seven hundred fifty experience points. What did we get? Ingress's teeth. One to six crushing damage, usable by Morty. They are fists. Don't ask. Hmm. This is a handful of Ingress's living teeth. Apparently they didn't want to go with her back through the portal to her home plane. They rattle amongst themselves whenever they are held close together. They remind you of a bunch of creepy ivory hopping bugs. To change the teeth to a different type, select use. The teeth may gain new level options and abilities as Morty goes up in levels. That's interesting. Hey, come on. Okay. Hey, come on. Hey, come on. So it kind of overrides his uh, regular mortis bite. I really like this proficiency fist. Don't ask. <laughs> okay, so hey. use it. Tooth equipped, and can you use it? He examined Ingress's teeth. You can't shake the resemblance to ivory bugs. You get the feeling that they are looking at you expectantly, expectantly awaiting some command. I want you to do pierce damage. The teeth elongate into sharp fangs. Really? Now they do piercing damage. That's interesting. You can change them to crushing or piercing damage. That's really useful. If you like fighting skeletons, you turn them into into crushing damage. I hope that works within combat too. We shall see. Okay, so how about we call it a video? Done. That's probably all we can do with the smoldering corpse Done. bar. Stay out of the exit zone. Yep, this is all we can do with the smoldering corpse bar. Nobody is able to level up, right? No. Okay, so we will call it a video and continue the next one. So, thank you very much for watching and see you soon.